This is a stimulus and social security update. Got some important update to share with you. Bonus cash between $500 and $3,000 being sent right now. And just 48 hours until new $1,800 to $4,000 checks going out. I'll let you know the four social security changes with bipartisan support that could help save the program. And fighting escalates between President Biden and the Republicans about social security and Medicare. And I'll give you some other important updates as well. Hope you're having a more than Monday and Monday. If you appreciate the fact-based, fast-paced updates, hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more daily straight-to-the-point updates on matters that financially matter to you. So what you think of the game last night? Uh, came down to the last minute or two and was that holding call at the end? Did that change the outcome of the game? Let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, all right, so thank you pay. Bonus cash between $500 and $3,000 being sent to paychecks right now. See if you qualify for extra money. So this is going on in New York. Healthcare workers are eligible for cash bonuses. Uh, so in New York last year, it was announced that they're expanding eligibility for healthcare worker bonus program. And through this bonus program, you could get up to $3,000. Uh, if, uh, for qualified healthcare workers in New York, and they have to work up to two six months uh, periods, and yeah, so it looks like you get between five hundred and three thousand dollars there, and then just forty eight hours until new monthly recurring payments worth eighteen hundred and four thousand five hundred fifty five dollars going out. See if you get the cash. So this is the second payment for February. If you're expecting your social security check coming, it's going to come on Wednesday, February 15th, if your birthday is between the 11th and the 20th. And then uh, the next payment will be the following Wednesday, if your birthday is the 21st to the 31st. 4,555 is the highest payment that you could get on social security. Uh, so yeah, those checks are going out. Speaking of social security, four social security changes with bipartisan support could help save the program. So I'll go over these four uh, changes that both Democrats and Republicans are in support of. So uh, increase the social security payroll tax. More than 70% of Americans, 70% Democrats, and 78% uh, Republicans are in favor of increasing the Social Security payroll tax rate. Currently, employers and employees both pay, uh, contribute 6.2% of wages, 12.4% total, to the Social Security program each year, uh, but raising it, the tax rate, uh, to 6.5% for both parties, up to 13%, would eliminate uh, a, a shortfall coming. So just by 0.6% raise, that could change things a lot. Apply Social Security payroll tax to more wages. So this would be for higher earners. Uh, they would be charged. And 79% of Republicans agree. 88% of Democrats agree to this. And then raise the retirement age. More than 70%. Uh, so Republicans, 75% agree with this. And Democrats, 76% agree with raising the retirement age. So currently, or they would raise it to 67 uh, and but then, or it's at 67, they would raise it to 68 over the next decade. Is 68 too high to start collective social security or should it remain at 67? Let me know your thoughts on that. And then reducing benefits for high earners. So uh, Republicans, 78% agree and Democrats, 86% agree, are in favor for reducing the social security benefits to individuals with income in the top 20%. Uh, that change would eliminate 11% of the budgetary shortfall. Should people who make more money be uh, reduce their benefits from social security? Maybe they made a lot of money, maybe they save more, have more for retirement? Should that money be used to help the program overall? Let me know your thoughts on that. And Biden escalates fight over Social Security and Medicare frustrating Republicans. The battle stands ready to play out on Capitol Hill and the 2024 presidential election, highlighting a growing bipartisan our growing partisan divide as the White House says Biden won't back down. So basically, it is between President Biden and Rick Scott. A um, few of the Democrats are jumping on board, attacking Rick Scott, uh, making it no longer a Republican issue because Republicans are now separating themselves from Rick Scott. Uh, but 
the fight continues. What's said here is the president for a few weeks now has been falsely saying there are people that want to get rid of Social Security and Medicare. And it's been inaccurate for a long time. And you saw last uh, when he tried to pin, pin it on us. That is what uh, Majority Leader Steve Scalise said. I just hope he stops going around the country telling that falsehood because there's no truth to it. So President Biden is going around the country on his tour talking about how Republicans want to cut or cancel or change Social Security and Medicare. Uh, but Rick Scott comes back with a new plan here. So Rick Scott announces new Social Security bill and Medicare bill amid Biden feud. Now, to be honest, I'm surprised this hasn't gotten more uh, media attention because this is pretty big news, a new Social Security bill. Uh, what this is called is the Protect Our Seniors Act. Basically, it would protect Social Security and Medicare from being changed, and any change that would happen would need 75% of the vote in Congress to happen. And also, it would take the $80 billion that would go towards the IRS funding, uh, funding uh, 87,000 new IRS agents, and that $80 billion would go towards Social Security. So that is Rick Scott's new Social Security bill. Is it going to pass? Haven't really heard anyone talk about it, actually, besides Rick Scott. Uh, but take a look at the Democrat perspective here on Social Security. Joining me now is Senator Maisie Hirono of Hawaii. She's a member of the Senate Judiciary and Armed Services Committee committees. And last year, she reintroduced the Protecting and Preserving Social Security Act. Senator Hirono, great to see you. Welcome to the Sunday Good Show. Good to be with you, Jonathan. So how seriously should we take the, G the GOP about doing away or doing away with or tinkering with Social Security. We should take it very seriously because they actually put it out there, as you say, uh, Tim Scott, not Tim Scott, uh, Rick, Rick Scott, Scott <laughs> of Florida, where they have a lot of seniors on Social Security. He put it out there. Remember, he is the guy who headed up their Senate re-election right. program. So it's not just one senator. It's the guy who headed up their program. We should take it very seriously because this is part of their plan, the Republican plan to cut government spending. Mm -hmm. And so what, if anything, can Democrats do to stop this from happening? Oh, we can certainly talk about it. And I was so delighted when the president said, some of you would like to do this. And then to see them uh, skittering around trying to get away from it. No, the fact that they are fighting among themselves says that this is a serious issue for the Republicans. And well, it should be because there are millions of people relying on Social Security. Were you surprised, as you were there. Yes. Were you surprised, as surprised as I was, that the Republicans walked right into a trap set by the president on Social Security? <laughs> well, they put it out there last year, so they should right. have expected that the president will would put it right out there, and, and he did. So this is a plan that they proposed uh, last year. Mm -hmm. Why would they think that we wouldn't continue to hang it around their necks? Last year, the Republican Study Committee in the House, endorsed by more than 180 members, put out an official budget proposal that would raise the retirement age to 70. Now Republicans are trying to tie all, the, the, all those things um, to the raising of the debt ceiling. Should entitlement reform be a part of that discussion, of raising the debt ceiling? Of course not, because the debt ceiling was about, is about paying the bills. The stuff that we've already bought, uh, we should pay for, and that is the debt ceiling. But the Republicans like to take issues uh, such as Social Security and other issues, cutting government uh, as a part of the hostage taking on the debt ceiling. So if they want to talk about the budget, et cetera, we should start with, how about making sure that the richest people in the country that the Republicans helped to the tune of almost $1.9 trillion in tax cuts. Why don't we start with talking about making sure those folks pay their fair share of taxes? So speaking of the budget, as Karine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, pointed out when she was here earlier in the show, the, bu the president's budget will be released on March 9th. Mm -hmm. Thus will begin the, I guess, the opening bid of yeah. negotiations on the budget. Mm -hmm. um, again... When that happens, shouldn't there be a discussion about ways to make, the, make Social Security and Medicare more solvent, more funding? Well, 
Thank you for mentioning in the beginning that I have a bill that would do that for Social Security. What my bill would do is it would lift the income ceiling for payments into the Social Security Trust Fund. And that ceiling right now is 160000 and anybody making over that doesn't pay a single dime more into Social Security, and that should not be how it works. Everybody should be paying into Social Security Trust Fund. My bill would do that. It will extend that trust fund until 2052. So that is one of the ways that we're going to strengthen Social Security. So I just want to make sure, because actually this is a question I was going to ask uh -huh. Maya in the, in, in the next interview. Right now, just the first $160,200 of wages are subject to the 6.2 percent tax. And if I heard you right, you think there should be no income limit. Well, my bill would phase in the, uh, that income limit. In, in my opinion, there shouldn't be any, any income at limit all. at all. Because Social Security is relied upon by millions and millions of people, including uh, close to 300,000 in the state of Hawaii alone. And uh, the, the, that money should be there. And we all should be paying into it, and that's it, as far as I'm concerned. But tell that to the Republicans as they try to run away from their desire to cut programs that really support working people and retirees. They care about the richest people in our country, that is for sure, but not about the working people and the retirees that we Democrats care about. What are your thoughts on that? Do you agree, disagree? Let me know how you feel about that. And that is all the news that I have for you today to hopefully cheer you up a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, this is Bella, this is the tip of the day. I wanna tell you that's something that you should really do. Like if you make a mistake, learn by experience and make mistakes. And I see you in the next video. Hi guys. Monster weed ice bleed in. Don't say that. I guys, I wish them bleed and see. I wish. I wish I could. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate all of your support. Today, uh, Bella and Kalea have their swimming class today. And uh, yeah, Bella, Bella doing her laps. Kalea learning how to swim a bit, you know, more of like a beginner class, but still getting in there and in the water and swimming. Um, anyways, hopefully you have a great rest of your day. If you want to check out any of my other videos, click right up here and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe. Thank you for watching.